All right. In this video, we're going to look at the three-wire method for checking threads. And what we're looking at is checking the pitch diameter. That's the key to a thread. The major diameter, minor diameter, uh, those are not as critical as the pitch diameter. The pitch diameter is measured on the flank. That's what we want to measure. So in lab practice number 16, we're going to do the three-wire thread measurement practice. Okay, the formulas are on the quiz, so that's a lot of help. So if you look at your PowerPoint and you do the PowerPoint and you, and you do the quizzes online on Blackboard, this should be no problem for you, other than sometimes you need four hands to do this. It's, it's very tricky. Okay, so I'm going to do number two right here. It's a 5 16 18 thread boat. So I looked in my box of boats and I found something that looked close to a 5 16 so I'm going to measure it right across here, and I get about 50. Oh, I'm sorry, I get about 306. Okay, 306 thousandths. So that is a 5 16 diameter because the 5 16 diameter is 312. So it's going to be about 5 6 7 thousandths below for clearance. Now let's make sure we have 18 threads per inch. So I have my 18 leaf here from my pitch gauge, and it fits right in there. So I've just identified this as being a 5 16 18. Now, to answer some of the questions, the range of wires that can be used. So we're going to use this constant, 0 0.560, divided by 18 threads per inch equals 31 thousandths. The constant of 0 0.900 divided by 18 is going to be 50 thousandths. So we can use any wire size between 31 and 50 thousandths, okay? So I've already chosen my wires, but here is what the wires look like. Now they come in various sizes, but I want to get as close to the, the 50 as I can. So I chose a 45. Uh, I want to choose the biggest wires that I can. They're easier to work with. Those little wires can be just a pain sometimes. So now that I've got my wire size, I chose 45. Uh, the required measurement over the wires, we're, we're going to do that through the formula here on the, on the quiz. Measurement over the wires is the major diameter of 0.3125 plus three times the wire size I'm using of 45 minus the constant of 1.5155 divided by 18 threads per inch. And remember how you do your math. Do the parentheses and division. Remember the please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Don't do the, the addition or subtraction first. Do what's in parentheses, then the division, and then do the addition and subtraction last, and you should come up with 363 and a half thousandths. So the required measurement over the wires is 363 and a half thousandths. So that's what we're looking for. Now there's a lot of ways we can use this uh, wire to measure our threads, but we really need four hands. Well, some people like rubber bands. They'll put rubber bands around one end to hold it and they'll hold them open at the other end, but really to get three wires over a boat and then hold the micrometer at the same time is a little bit difficult. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the wires and stick them in some modeling clay. Now this is just regular modeling clay. I think I got it at Walmart. Uh, I use it for the CMM quite a bit. So it's gonna be here in the lab. Uh, so we stick one wire on, on one side, the other two on the other side, just like that. See, I've got my wires. Now, what's critical is that I want my spindle. Remember when we studied the micrometer, this is the spindle, this is the anvil. I want the spindle over the double wires. It's a little bit easier like that, okay? So I'm going to put my wires over my part, just about like this. You can see, whoops, make sure the bottom one is in the middle. Just like that. And now I'm going to take my micrometer and get my measurement over the wires. And it looks like I'm going to get make sure I get it straightened out here. All right, it looks like my measurement over the wires is going to be 350, 60, 162 and a half. 362 and maybe 7 tenths. But you can see that I've got one wire on bottom, two on top, they're right across from each other, and that's what I'm looking for. Okay, so uh, 
And once I get this measurement, then I've, I've got it down pat. But you see how the wires are held in place with the modeling clay on the other end. And I have two on top, one on bottom, and they have to be in a straight line. You can't have it slanted. Okay? So the modeling clay is a great help in this situation. So the measurement that I, I uh, just got was 362 thousandths and maybe 7 tenths. It does have veneer reading on it. So the difference between what I got and what the actual answer was, uh, the actual answer should have been 3635 and I measured 0.3627. So it looks like about 8 tenths of a thousandth difference. 0 0.0008 and that's what I'm looking for when on question D it says micrometer reading variation from the above how many thousands difference so now I want to convert that to metric so I'm going to clear up my calculator so I'm going to go 0 0.0008 times 25.4 and I'm going to get 0 0.020 millimeters okay so that's exactly how we did this question right here. Okay, we measured over the wires. We got within eight tenths of a thousandth, which is very good considering it's galvanized coating. Okay, so what we're going to do, there's about, let's see, um, I don't think there's quite a few of these. There's about nine of these. Okay, so all you'll do is the same thing for each one. So I just did number two for you, so you've got eight to go. But like I said, using the modeling clay is a very good way to hold the wires because you've got to hold the back of the wires, the front of the wires, hold the boat, hold the micrometer, and get the reading. It's very difficult if you don't have anything, uh, unless you have some modeling clay, rubber bands, or paper clips. Some people use paper clips. Uh, whatever it takes to hold the back of these, okay? So you want your spindle on the double side, your anvil on the single side, make sure they're straight across and I think you'll do a great job. If you need me, look me up in the shop. Thanks.